Have you ever thought that once upon a time, there was a terrible disaster on the site of the beautiful Yellowstone Park? 640,000 years ago, the dormant Yellowstone supervolcano awoke, leading to the death of tens of thousands of living beings. And the most frightening thing is that this can happen again at any moment. When the Yellowstone supervolcano erupted for the first time, 1,200 degree lava flooded the land, destroying all life in its path. Thousands of kilometers of the territory of what is now the United States were covered with volcanic ash. Because of that, the continent didn't see the sun for many months, and earthquakes and tsunamis destroyed all life within a radius of several miles. That sounds like a fantasy apocalypse movie. Unfortunately, it's far from fiction. Scientists are afraid that the supervolcano will erupt again, and this natural disaster may well happen this year. But could we survive a catastrophe that might cover most of the planet? Scientists know of only about 20 supervolcanoes similar to Yellowstone. But what is a supervolcano? Its eruption could provoke climate change on Earth and cause catastrophic consequences. One of the factors of the supervolcano explosion is the massive amount of ash. This led to many people losing their lives during one of the deadliest disasters in the history of humankind. The eruption of the Tambora supervolcano in India Indonesia in 1815. The eruption itself lasted for three days. As a result of this natural disaster, over 70,000 people passed away. Hundreds of thousands of people subsequently died of disease and starvation. The Tambora eruption affected the entire planet. The volcano ejected 175 cubic kilometers of volcanic debris. If it's difficult to imagine the impact, let me help you. This could bury the state of Rhode Island under almost 57 meters of ash, and Singapore would be covered with a layer half as much, almost 26 meters. Tambora erupted at a speed of 500 million kilograms per second. This mass is 180 times greater than that of the waters of Niagara. But magma is not the worst thing that Tambora threw out of its depths. The height of the ash plume, which rose after the eruption reached almost 43 and a half kilometers, even though the usual flight altitude of a Boeing doesn't even reach 10 kilometers. The winds quickly carried the ash and volcanic gases around the globe. When magma was on the surface, the substances dissolved in it, sulfur, chlorine, and fluorine, entered the atmosphere. They provoked the so-called anti-greenhouse effect, which triggered global cooling. The power and destruction from the explosion of Tambora were equal to the explosion of two million atomic bombs. In just a few days, Tambora generated as much energy as the entire United States consumes in a year. Another supervolcano eruption that changed the life of humankind is Krakatoa. This catastrophe happened on August 26, 1883. That's almost 70 years after the Tambora eruption. Krakatoa is an uninhabited island in Indonesia. The captain of the German warship Elizabeth, who was passing by, noticed a cloud of smoke and dust rising into the sky. This was the beginning of an eruption that lasted over two months. It caused the death of 36,000 people and destroyed hundreds of coastal villages. The Krakatoa eruption created the loudest sound ever recorded. It was heard on 10% of the surface of our planet and reached Australia and the island of Mauritius, which are four and a half thousand kilometers away from Krakatoa. Two-thirds of the island of Krakatoa in the northern part went underwater, triggering flows of lava, pumice, and ash. But even such destruction wasn't the most terrible consequence. A truly horrible continuation of the disaster was a massive tsunami, which destroyed all life in the coastal zone of neighboring islands. When Krakatoa erupted. Waves even reached the Hawaiian Islands and South America. The largest of them, 41 meters high, hit the Indonesian province of Banten, and it was followed by another series of waves.
waves that destroyed 165 settlements. All life and buildings on the islands were destroyed. Thousands of people from Java and Sumatra were swept into the sea. Among all the victims of Krakatoa, only 2,000 died from the eruption itself. It was the tsunami that took the lives of another 34,000 people. And a few days after the eruption, observers in Hawaii began to notice a bright afterglow after sunset. Two months later, such reports began to arrive from Australia and Northern Europe. Scientists have concluded that this is the effect of sunlight being scattered by tiny particles of volcanic dust, which, after so many months, were still high in the atmosphere. Such a phenomenon could cause a volcanic winter on our planet. This happened after the explosion of the Toba volcano. Scientists say this natural disaster set our civilization back hundreds of years, and who knows what our achievements would be today if it weren't for this supervolcano eruption. This catastrophe occurred 74,000 years ago and provoked a volcanic winter, which, according to scientists, lasted from 6 to 10 years. In general, the Toba eruption led to a global cooling of Earth, which was felt throughout the next millennium. The populations of hominids and mammals in Asia were destroyed, and only a few Homo sapiens in Africa managed to survive. They developed complex social and economic strategies that enabled humanity to repopulate Asia. The Volcanic Explosivity Index of the Toba eruption is estimated at 8 points, and this is the highest rating on the scale. The volume of the Toba volcano eruption is genuinely impressive. This is 1,078 cubic kilometers, of which almost 306 are in the form of ash fall. It covered the Indian Ocean and the Arabian and South China Seas. Fragments of the eruption were found even in East Africa. Archaeological finds suggest that some people managed to escape the devastating effects of the supervolcano eruption. Indeed, in Daba in India, it was possible to discover tools about 74,000 years old. This suggests that small groups of hunter-gatherers still managed to escape, but their life expectancy after the disaster significantly decreased. After all, they had to survive in conditions where all crops were destroyed and the air temperature dropped to minus 10 degrees Celsius worldwide. All of these volcanoes have erupted in the past, but the danger exists even today because dormant supervolcanoes can wake up at any second. So, where exactly can this happen? There are about 20 supervolcanoes in the world. They're scattered all over Earth's surface and exist on other planets as well. Their eruptions may have even influenced the fact that Mars is now uninhabited. After all, each of them could kill life on the planet. Scientists managed to prove that in the region of northern Mars, Arabia Terra, there were thousands of super eruptions within 500 million years, and they were just the same as the eruption of the Toba volcano on Earth, only a thousand times more often. Researchers managed to analyze minerals on the surface of Arabia Terra and confirm their assumptions about their volcanic origin. Each eruption on Mars released gigantic volumes of carbon dioxide which thickened the atmosphere, blocking the sun and lowering the temperature. Scientists from the NASA Space Flight Center are seriously considering this possible scenario. But all the supervolcanoes of Mars are concentrated on the northern part of the planet. On Earth, they're scattered over the entire surface. They may once have all been in the same area, just like on Mars, but due to the displacement of the continents under the movement of tectonic plates, they dispersed all over the planet. Today, one of the most powerful terrestrial supervolcanoes is Nova Rupta in Alaska. It's located in the middle of the peninsula. In 1912, the largest eruption in North America's history occurred here. The first signs were felt five days before the start in the village of Katmai. It's located at a distance of almost 258 kilometers from Nova Rupta. These were strong earthquakes that forced residents 
to evacuate, and on the day of the eruption in the morning, locals heard several explosions. A few hours later, the crew of the ship Dora, which was in the Shelikov Strait, saw a huge cloud of eruption. At that moment, darkness enveloped the ship and the neighboring island of Kodiak, which is several hundred kilometers away. The darkness level was so high, so complete, that even lantern light wasn't visible at arm's length. This went on for 60 hours. The roofs of buildings in the village of Kodiak collapsed under the weight of the ash, and the rest of the houses were struck by lightning from the ash clouds that entirely burned them to the ground. The water in the village became too polluted to drink. As a result of the eruption, Mount Aniakchak appeared. Its depth is almost 610 meters, and its diameter is more than 10 kilometers. The mount was formed due to the collapse of the volcanic mountain with a height of 2,133 meters. This place is also called the Valley of 10,000 Smokes. From the end of summer and during all of autumn, it's very windy in the valley. The winds raise the ashes that have remained even until this day and frighten the locals, making them believe the volcano has woken up again. But if the eruption does happen again, Alaska could disappear forever. Ashes would cover the territory of most of Chukotka and Canada, and the number of victims would reach hundreds of thousands of people. Another supervolcano we should be wary of is Pictou, called Chengbai in China, although it's located not in China, but in the most isolated country in the world, North Korea. And unlike most volcanoes on the planet, it's not located at the junction of tectonic plates, but right in the center of one of them. Simply put, Mount Pektu stands right where, according to all the laws of nature, there simply shouldn't be anything. Pektu is a sacred mountain for the people of North Korea. At its top, there are hot springs and gas vents, and in the crater, there's a pool called Heaven Lake. But several small earthquakes in 1903, hitting the territory in quick succession, were enough for the dormant Pike II volcano to cause a series of powerful tremors that lasted three years. This scared the North Korean government, so much so that it began negotiating with neighboring countries to discuss plans for assistance and evacuation in case Pike II did explode. Seismologist James Hammond even managed to get permission to enter the country and explore the bowels of the volcano. In 2013, he arrived at Pike 2 and installed six solar-powered seismometers there. Their length was 59 and a half kilometers. For two years, these seismometers recorded tremors and earthquakes. Hammond could find out that under Mount Pike 2, there's a layer of partially molten rock, a mushy mixture of gas and crystals. Seismologists from the University of Texas believe Pike 2 is one of the most dangerous volcanoes on the planet, and the risk of its eruption is very high. The previous eruption of Pike II happened in 946 BC, and it was the most powerful eruption in the last 2,000 years. The volcano released 45 megatons of sulfur into the air. This is several times more than during the Tambor eruption. If Pike II explodes in the near future, the consequences will be horrifying. North Korea will be wiped off the face of the earth. China, South Korea, and Japan will lose millions of their citizens. The catastrophe will destroy millions of buildings and contaminate all sources of drinking water, which will cause acid rain. They will pollute the soil, destroying the crops, and all of us will face a deadly global cooling across the earth as it already happened with the Toba explosion. But how do we know if one of the supervolcanoes is about to erupt? Anak Krakatau told us about this with its behavior. It's also called the Child of Krakatau because it appeared on the site of a supervolcano that 
died out after the eruption. It was initially a small cone, but it had been growing rapidly throughout the 20th century. The landscape around it also changed. The ground was going several meters up and falling back. And in December of 2018, the volcano exploded, causing a devastating, deadly tsunami with a wave height of almost 80 meters. 437 people passed away, over 30,000 were injured, and another 30,000 became refugees. The child of Krakatau eruption is considered one of the deadliest in the 21st century. But unlike its parent, this volcano didn't disappear after the eruption, but decreased three times. And in 2021, the underwater volcano Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai erupted. Locals felt the tremors and saw the boulders inflating several meters high months before the eruption. And sulfur was strongly felt in the air a few days before the volcanic explosion. When the volcano exploded in the Pacific Ocean, a column of smoke over 56 kilometers high rose into the sky and reached the mesosphere. The the explosion was so intense that it was even heard in Alaska, and its power was hundreds of times greater than the explosion of the atomic bomb in Hiroshima. According to UN estimates, 80% of the inhabitants of the islands located nearby felt the effects of the eruption on themselves. Nukalofa, the capital of Tonga, was hit by a wave more than a meter high. Residents of the city fled to the hills and rooftops, but some were in injured by huge boulders from the Earth's interior, falling from a height of 40 kilometers. That's how high the explosion lifted them in the air. The eruption also caused 590,000 lightning strikes. Still, Yellowstone remains the main supervolcano threatening our planet. And recently, it reminded of itself again as if hinting it's ready to explode at any moment. One of the most famous geysers in Yellowstone, Steamboat, has completely changed the nature of its eruption. Now, scientists are closely monitoring the rock around it. After all, it could begin to swell several meters up within a radius of several meters from the geyser. When they spot such changes, they'll have to act quickly. After all, this would mean the volcano is ready to explode at any moment. And if that happens, the ground around will go several tens of meters high. The sound from the supervolcano explosion will travel across the Atlantic Ocean and be heard throughout Europe. A column of smoke that'll rise into the mesosphere will be seen from space. In an hour after the Yellowstone eruption, within a radius of 100 kilometers, there'll be nothing left alive. Some people will die from the shockwave of the explosion, while some will suffocate in a cloud of asphyxiating gases. Then volcanic ash will spread throughout the United States of America. The cloud from the eruption will cover half of the country. Volcanic ash is six times heavier than snow, and the roofs of houses will begin to collapse under that tremendous weight. Ashes will clog all filters and motors in sewage treatment plants, cars, and airplanes. The skies over America will be closed. All flights will be canceled. Intense lightning discharges will accumulate in the ash clouds, provoking forest fires. Earth will be covered with rains of poisonous volcanic ash containing mercury, sulfur, and arsenic. Damp ash will collect on the wires of the power grid and cut them off. We'll be left without light and communication. But believe me, that's not the worst part yet. Volcanic ash will flow into the rivers, contaminating the water in them. The eruption will provoke mud flows that sweep away everything, plants, animals, people, and houses. Nuclear power plants will be shut down as their cooling systems are powered by water inflow from rivers. Looting will begin. Hospitals will close one by one. According to rough estimates, half a million people will die in the volcanic impact zone. A week after the eruption, Yellowstone will spew ash columns up to one and a half thousand kilometers away. In this 
deadly cloud will continue to kill people. After all, volcanic ash is rocks ground into dust. Each particle of such ash has pointed edges, and if it enters the lungs, it'll either destroy them from the inside or cement them. Domestic and wild animals will also die, and crops will be destroyed. We'll face the worst famine in human history. Denver and Salt Lake City will remain in ruins. The states of Wyoming, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, and Utah will become lifeless. But not only the United States of America is under threat. The ash cloud will reach Europe. Hundreds of thousands of people will become its victims. This will set back the development of humanity by several hundred or maybe a thousand years. This scenario sounds bleak and frightening. Could there be anything worse? Actually, yes, there could be. The only thing worse than the Yellowstone eruption is the explosion of all supervolcanoes simultaneously. After all, earthquakes will shape the entire planet when a super eruption happens. They could wake dormant supervolcanoes and start a chain reaction of terrible eruptions. But could humanity survive such a challenge and who will manage to escape? What do you think?